welcome to worship on this glorious Sunday. It is so good to have you all here. It's wonderful to have so many lovely, loving and love, beloved faces in front of me. And um, I know there's folks up on our Zoom call uh, who are joining us today. Um, I want to make sure you all know, especially those of you um, who are here for the maybe the first time or the second time, that we do have um, a coffee hour afterwards that everyone's invited to with plenty of refreshments. And, um, and I want to um, take this opportunity to thank uh, this congregation for such a wonderful dinner last night. It was truly special. And um, I, haven't, I haven't had it in me yet to look at the pictures. I will go back to those. Um, but uh, I want to thank you all and for the beautiful pasta bowl from Roseanne and from the, um, the, the very generous and kind gift and the flowers and all the great food, um, but most especially for all of you who were able to make it for being there. Um, I also want to th welcome our associate conference minister, the Reverend Paul Sangree, and he, he will be a part of the final part of the service today. Um, and uh, I also want to thank all who made this special trip, especially there's a whole chunk of my family here um, in that long pew right in front of Roger is um, well, my, is um, a, a chunk of my family. I come from a quite large one, but uh, it's a good chunk of them. So um, I'm glad they're here. Uh, there is Sunday school today, so um, for the kids, so that's a good. That's always a good thing, and we are trying to get on a regular schedule that every week. Um, so uh, please encourage children to. Um, come and um, be a part of it. Their family does not have to have any official association with this church for children to be a part of our Sunday school program. Um, there's also a youth group today, the very first meeting of the newly revamped um, youth group will happen this afternoon at five o'clock um, in Bailey Hall. If you have any questions, you can see Tammy. Um, and um, it's for students then grades six through 12. Uh, there's, it's not real, um, it's not real hard. It's not, they don't have to have any, again, no church experience or affiliations required. Um, and so we look forward to obviously welcoming those folks also. Anybody else have announcements that need to be made today? Patty. I just want to thank everybody who was there last night and who helped make it possible. It was wonderful, all the help. There is cake left, so don't forget to go into the coffee house and have cake. And there's also a memory book that um, it would be great if you could sign if you weren't here and didn't have a chance to sign it last night. And it's just inside the hall. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. Anybody else have announcements that need to be made today? <laughs> Okay, well then, I, oh, got one over here. Oh, a lobby. Uh, there'll be a brief meeting of any council members that are here just for informational purposes. Okay. After so a brief um, church council meeting um, after church um, today. Uh, so see a lobby if, um, that's, if you're one of those folks. Anybody else have announcements? Well, then I invite you to open the red hymnal to number 437. And I will say that the, the hymns that were chosen today were picked because they're some of the ones I love the most. Um, 437, this is my song. <laughs>
I invite you now to join me in the call to worship. Creating God, you have made us in your image. You have led us through our challenges, granted us grace when we least expected it. You are the fountain of blessing, the source of unending goodness. Alleluia. We turn to you, we thank you, we worship you. Come, generous spirit, and transform us by your grace. Alleluia. Holy One, in your grace you give us all that we need, each moment, each day, to live as your beloved ones. Grant that we may always be mindful of your spirit, alive in us and in all. Amen. Please join me now as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd invite all the children to come up and sit in this front pew here. I already am. You already are. You're the first one there. You too. Right here. You might have to scoot over. Come on up, y'all. Nope, we're going to sit over here, Shady. One of you can have this seat, too. You want to have a special seat? Go for it. Um, can you guys scoot over a little? There you go. So I, as you probably, some, some of you know, because some of you were here last night, but some of you weren't, weren't here. Today's my last day as your, as your pastor. And um, when we have a last of something or when we're going, away, and I'm not going very far, I'm only going 11 miles away, but I won't be here on Sunday mornings anymore. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about remembering what do you what are the things you remember most about church because i and, and the things you got to do in church what do you what do you think what shady uh, when we got those little pieces of bread oh yeah when we get communion yes that's a that's a cool thing other things you remember that we do here what do we what else do we do here Water over there. Oh yes, um, when there's bapti when there's baptisms and there's water over there when we baptize a baby, I think probably the baptism we're trying we're remembering is Susanna's back there in the corner. Um, and what do you remember, Kelly? Um, uh, when I first came here, and I um, uh, uh, an adult helped me uh, like this. Morning. Oh yeah, when you yeah you were you did it all by yourself this time, but when you were a lot smaller. You did it with um, an adult that walked up with you, and who helped you? Was it Karen? It's Karen. Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> and um, so here's some of the things I remember that we got to do together. How about Christmas pageants? Now I'm looking at one of the Jesuses. Are, were all three of yours Jesus? Just two of them. <laughs> this is this is Jesus, and Susanna back there was Jesus this past year in our Christmas pageant, right? Um, and I remember Easter egg hunts. If some of you came to those outside, I can remember um, watching some of you ring the bell up there in the balcony. And there's times like I can remember lots of times where we talked about stuff like this and then you ran off to Sunday school, right? And I think there's a few times where on Palm Sunday, we walked up the aisle and you waved your palms. So I have a ton of memories to go with me. Um, and I've seen some of you, I've known you since you were babies um, or very little kids. So I wanted to see if we could take a picture together of you and of me and all of you so I can remember you. Is that okay? Is it okay if I take a picture with you guys? I like when I was five. How old are you now? Six, way back when, when you were five. Of course I remember that. When you, and how old are you now? 
You're three, four? I definitely remember when you were three, for sure. Tammy, you wanna take our picture? So come on up here, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, you all, like, you're gonna to have to stand up because I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand too. So you, some of you can be around me on either side in the back. But, nope, I gotta be able to see you. I gotta be able to see your beautiful faces. Wow, this you guy, guys wanna help me? Kelly's almost as tall. Kelly's almost as tall. <laughs> that is, that is, I know, that, that's an amazing feat. Yeah. So we all in the, it's going to, and now, uh, yep. JD, you can open it. You stand there? Um, JD, I can't see. JD, you got to move out a little. Yeah. You got it? This is how, and I'm going to, I'm going to take this, I'm going to this picture. I'll, I'll make sure I send a copy to all of your parents so they have a picture too. Oh my God. <laughs> Smile, everyone. Great. Thank you all. Well, let's say a prayer, and then you're going to go have a Sunday school lesson. <laughs> Okay, you know what we're you know we're gonna do. Sometimes people, when they do prayers, they hold hands. So we're gonna make a big circle. We're gonna make girls. You wanna come over and make a circle? Wanna come over and make a circle? Ready to make a circle? Okay, hold. You might have to put your Rubik's cube. Did you figure it out yet? Oh my gosh, I can't figure those out. I can. You wanna hold hands? Okay. Now, you, you, when we, you, can you say the things I say? Yeah. Loving God. Loving God. Loving God. Help us. Help us. To remember. To remember. All of the people. All of the people. And all of the fun things. And all of the fun things. And all of the things we learn. And all of the fun we learn. Here at the Federated Church. We pray this. We pray this. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. Have a good class, you guys. Oh, see you at see you coffee hour. <laughs> the featherweighted toy. That's the name of us. Well, just as uh, I got to pray with the kids, we also get to lift up our joys and concerns. Um, and uh, a few that I have, I know of ahead of time are, uh, as we do each week, we pray for another one of our ch churches in our area. And today it's the Shrewsbury Community Church who does not have a settled pastor. They kind of have people help it supplying through. Um, I wanna definitely um, pray, offer a, the joy of last night and the celebration that was here. Uh, it was, it filled my heart and uh, I so appreciate all the effort that went into it and of the lovely gifts that I received also. I wanna lift up um, my nephew, Eric, and his bride-to-be, Andrea. Um, a, most of those people you see in the back are all go, are um, attending um, the wedding that I'm going to with all of them in San Diego the day after my last day here. We fly out on Thursday, uh, but we, we are, it will be a great joy. And we, so we ask God's blessing on the marriage of Eric and Andrea. Um, I want, I'm lifting up on Jeff's behalf. He um, asked if I would uh, thank everybody for all the love and support you've provided him over this, especially over this last month. Um, he's here with us today after pretty major surgery, not very long ago. And so, um, he is filled with gratitude. Uh, by way of concerns, um, I don't have any specific ones right here, but um, as we do each week, I lift up the people of Ukraine. Uh, other joys or concerns you have? Phyllis. Uh, okay, so prayers for Karen with COVID. Other joys or concerns, Karen. Karen's brother-in-law, John, undergoing tests at Dartmouth Hitchcock. Kathy. What's his first name? Jason. Jason, who's a... So traveler's blessings. And it, yes, oh. So the joy of having family here, from, all the way from Kentucky. Oh, you are so kind. He says, Kathy and John, for those of you who don't know, live in Saratoga, so it is an effort for them to get here, for sure. Um, Sandy. Uh, it is a joy that John and Kathy are 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the joy that folks that we've been lifting up in prayer are here. Others. Okay, Sue. Blessings on you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sue. Other Dan. I didn't hear the first name. Uh, Megan. Megan? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else that we have today? Then please join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, on this Sabbath, at the very start of the glorious season of autumn, with its stunning colors and visitors here from all over, we lift our joys to you with great thanksgiving. Today, that includes the blessing of the Shrewsbury Community Church. We give thanks for uh, the healing and that is happening with Jeff, and we offer, lift up his prayer of thanksgiving for all of those who loved and supported him in this past month. We pray blessings upon Eric and Andrea as they will join in holy matrimony on Saturday. We also uh, lift up and give thanks for the joy of visiting family, especially those from Kentucky, and the joy that those who we've prayed over for some time are here in our midst. We lift up and give thanks for all that make this church such a wonderful and special place, especially those who were able to celebrate last night and all those who put so much work into making it happen. And I certainly give thanks for the blessing of my time getting to be your pastor. Uh, oh God, you have been by our side as we have walked together as your church these past 16 years, and that has been our hope and strength. Your presence has been a part of every celebration of weddings, baptisms, and the welcoming of new members, of pageants and dinners, of worship by candlelight and at sunrise and the many Sundays that we call ordinary, but that often felt like anything but. Your word has been a source of hope and wisdom whenever we have leaned into it in Bible studies and whenever we have gathered to worship you. Together with you, we have been honored to serve this Arlington Sandgate Sunderland community, the one we love in big and small ways, hopefully being a beacon to your abiding love and our care and concern and actions for those we know and the many we will never meet here and around the world. We have leaned into your grace and mercy during the pain of illness and the grief of losing those we've known and loved. We know that we can continue to raise up those we hold in concern and you will be there from this day forward. Today, our prayers of concern include healing prayers for Karen and John, for Jason and Megan, and for the people of war-torn Ukraine. Oh God, may you continue to be always our hope and strength. On this day of leave-taking, may all that we share together form lasting memories. You have and will continue to use us as instruments of your peace. It is in your holiest of names that we pray. Amen. As the beauty of autumn unfolds in right in front of our very eyes, we are filled with gratitude and awe. Let us now share of our gifts as we have been gifted by God.
just thank you. Loving and gracious God, we ask your blessing on these gifts that they will be used to continue to spread your message of peace and love and hope and joy. We ask that you bless these lives, that they will continue to walk in your ways, sharing your goodness with all the world. We pray this blessing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to open your black hymnal to number 2051, I was there to hear your morning cry. Done. 
His miracles and the judgments he has uttered, O spring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Then he brought Israel out of silver and gold, and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He opened the rock and oh, water washed out. Then he can't I'm sorry. Why not? And it starts with pizza. Romans 12, 9 through 21, and it's love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patience in affliction and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position, and do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, says Paul, if your enemy is hungry, <laughs> feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will keep burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Blessings on these words. In the pocket size NRSV copy of the Bible that I've had on my desk for the last 16 years here, and most of the time I was in seminary, the passage that Karen just read from Paul's letter to the people in Rome is titled, Marks of the True Christian. It is filled with the aspirations we who follow Jesus are to try to live into. It is a beautiful and a challenging list and I have yet to meet anyone, even those nearest to death, 
who would claim to have mastered them all. And still we must try. As this is my final opportunity to be with all of you for Sunday worship, after I calculated somewhere around a little over 800 different services, I have come up with a list of my own. It is a list of the top 10 lessons I have learned as I have had the great honor of serving as your pastor. And these are not in any particular order. So here goes. The four family rule. I learned very early on to assume that if talking to someone in this community about someone else, be very careful. <laughs> the four family rule, that's my own name for it, says that if you live in Arlington, Sandgate, or Sunderland for more than two generations, you will be related by blood or marriage to one of those four families. And if you need coaching to help connect the dots, Sandy Grover is your go-to person. <laughs> I have relied on her for these connections and so much more. To get to work side by side with Sandy has been one of the greatest gifts you all have given me. Number two, don't be afraid of someone or something new. Many of you have become a part of this church over the past 16 years. And officially, we have welcomed 41 new members since I've been here. With each of you came new ideas. And this church is so much richer because you committed to God and all of us. And it was your desire to make your faith journey here in this place. Number three, sometimes the hardest times present you with new opportunities. The greatest overall challenge we faced together along with the rest of the world was COVID-19. On Sunday, March 8th, 2020, the 10 a.m. service of worship was held here as usual and was followed that evening by the Arlington Area Child Care Mac and Cheese Extravaganza and Dessert Auction right on these very steps. That was to be the last time we gathered in person here in this building for the next year and a half. We quickly shifted gears and Zoom became our connection to each other during that very isolating and hard time. And it ended up giving us the kick in the pants we needed to expand how we do worship and Bible and book studies and meetings. Although not always ideal, Zoom allowed me to see so many of your beautiful faces, even those from faraway places like Michigan and New Jersey, who I think are with us today, and I I believe Celine is here from Rhode Island. Um, while we prayed with the world for the millions who were sickened with COVID and the over 1 million Americans who died from its complications. We also ended up starting back together again under a tent, which was new for us. And this, was, this past summer was the third summer we got to worship outside amid the sounds of our neighbors, like the birds and the barking dogs and the occasional lawnmower. Number four, take full advantage of the holidays and the holy days. Be it the stunningly beautiful sight of all of your candlelit faces and the poignant notes of Silent Night sung as a huge human circle at the end of the Christmas Eve service, or the power of story and extinguishing of lights at the Tenebrae service on Maundy Thursday, or the dew wet shoes blended with awe on the Mac Molding Hill at the Easter sunrise service. Some traditions have the power to take our breath away year after year. Number five, this community needs us and we need this community. From the everyone eats meals and community care kits that we distributed during the peak of the COVID pandemic, to the fact that two thirds of the money we needed for the steeple repair and painting project came from outside of our congregation to so many other efforts. It is clear that when we serve the community, such as through the summer lunch program, and when the wider community gets the chance to partner with us, we all benefit. And we get to live into the words from Paul's letter to the Romans that Karen shared, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Number six, the one thing that brings people together more than any other, no, it's not food. <laughs> Sadly, it's death. 
Ye all have rallied together and lifted each other up and always extended gracious hospitality whenever there was a death in our midst. It has been one of the greatest privileges of my life to have officiated at 195 funerals, memorial, and graveside services. No two families experience grief and loss in the same way. And yet this church always rises to the occasion with quiet care and compassion. Number seven, humor helps. My mistakes have been many, and the forgiveness you have extended me has always been a gift I've really appreciated. And the ability to laugh together when things haven't gone as expected have made all the difference. From a literal bat from our belfry, sending us running into Bailey Hall in the middle of a worship service, to the treasured peals of laughter coming from coffee hour, to the sound of giggling from our children, and being able to laugh together will always be a beautiful and treasured memory for me. Also be sure to check in with Gail Rice. She, I guarantee you she will have a joke for you. <laughs> Number eight, there is no right way to do church. Very few of us grew up in this church, and even if we did, we are certainly not doing church like it was done here in the 50s and 60s. In the relatively brief 16 years I've been here, when we consider our 180-year-long history, we have embraced technology in ways our federated church ancestors could never have imagined. We now have a website, and all of these have come in the last 16 years, a website, a Facebook page. We Zoom and then put our services on GNAT TV. Thank you, Brandon. Um, often I am texted questions from you all and a whole bunch of other folks about church business. We have Wi-Fi in all our buildings, multiple microphones. We have printed a lot less on paper than ever before, including the monthly newsletter. This television screen that's connected to the internet, Bluetooth technology for our printer in the office, and I'm sure I'm missing many things. Number nine, there are a whole bunch of folks cheering us on. I have consistently over the years met many dozens, if not hundreds of folks who are not members and we will never see here on a Sunday morning, who believe in us and want this church to thrive. This includes those who use our space, who frequent our dinners, who pick up or drop off produce on the farm stand, or who just admire us from afar. We are held in prayer by so many. You, this beloved Federated Church of East Arlington community, you have all been my best teachers by how you've lived and how you've questioned and the care with which you treat each other and the world. And finally, number 10, love is love is love. Whether things are going well or not, the thing that sustained me, and I know will be life sustaining for Andres as well, is the knowledge that I am loved by God and by all of you. In pastoral ministry, no two days are ever alike, and some days can be especially emotionally draining. But remembering both those loves, the knowledge and transformative power that comes from knowing God is ever with us, and the strength that comes from knowing I was loved by y'all, this amazing group of individuals has made this time we've spent together here in this beautiful corner of Vermont that we are so blessed to get to call home. This has all made it possible for us together to have served God and God's people. This ministry with all of you has been life changing. That's it for the list. I leave you with profound gratitude and may God continue to bless you each individually and as God's church. Amen. I now would invite um, Paul Sangree and Alavi Worky to come forward. And I'd encourage you to open your bulletins and join in the service of ending an authorized ministry. Beginning on September 1st, 2007, this local church called Kathy Clark to serve as our pastor. 
I thank the Federated Church of East Arlington, its members and friends for the love, kindness, and support shown me these last 16 years. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. As I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. I forgive you and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. To you, members and friends of the Federated Church of East Arlington, release the Reverend Kathy Clark from the duties of pastor. We do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for her ministry in retirement as it unfolds in new ways? We do, with the help of God. Do you, Kathy, release this local church from turning to you and depending on you? I do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here and on a relationship with Andrus who will come to serve? I do, with the help of God. I want to just say a personal word before I read from the bulletin that uh, you as a congregation have been so blessed to have Pastor Kathy over the last 16 years. She is one of our conference's most gifted pastors. So she has been a, a great gift here. And thank you, Kathy, on behalf of the Association of the Conference for all that you have done in uh, our work together. Thank you. So on behalf of the Southwest Association and the Vermont Conference and the United Church of Christ, I witness to the words spoken here today, words of thankfulness, forgiveness, and release. So the member churches of our association and conference hold each of you in prayer, and we pledge our support in the transition signified in this service. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we give thanks for remembered times when we together have shared the life of faith. We thank you for the moments we have shared with Kathy in worship, in learning, in service. We pray that Kathy will be aware of your spirit's guidance as she moves into the next phase of life. In the name of Jesus the Savior. Amen. Let us go out singing then our closing hymn number 2222 in the black hymnal, The Servant Song.
as we go out into the world, changed by our individual and collective experiences of God's love. May we continue to love and serve God and God's people with open hearts. Amen. Amen. Peace of God be with you always. And also with you. Let us go now offering each other signs and words of God's peace. Mm -hmm.